eyes. E a dessa do metano. Hello, everyone. I'm just trying to put the, the YouTube on the web page. Yeah. Let's see if Cynthia can connect. She has trauma on internet. Uh, me too. I'm at home today, so I hope everything is fine. Uh, excuse me, Shimonchu. Uh, yeah. would, would you mind if I made, uh, if I ask you a question right now regarding the lecture? Uh, yes, I think it's no problem, yeah. Okay, um, so uh, I was just wondering, because like uh, this semester I took a course on functional analysis and we pretty much deal with a, a lot with infinite dimensional vector spaces, right? And uh, well, I was wondering if uh, we could uh, in some way make sense of uh, um, make some use of, uh, I don't know, some um, aspects of functional analysis in this uh, complex uh, network systems. I mean, do, do you know any sort of instrumentation that yeah, you... Yeah, yes, apply? yes, true. This is a, a quite recent uh, trend, new trend, that uh -huh. I, I will speak about on, on the last lecture because for me is a beyond network, but if you want, I can explain. So mm -hmm. a network is, a, a, I will explain later, but a network is a finite set of uh, nodes but you yeah. can think of making some limit where the number of nodes goes to infinity. Mm -hmm. And then what you obtain in some limit is called graphon. So graphon right. is more or less a function of two variables that play the role of an infinity matrix. Mm -hmm. Once you have this function, you can reconstruct some operation that I will explain later. Uh, mm -hmm. at, at the end, you will end up with some PDS problem yeah. whose solution is indeed a, a functional analysis. So yes, there is a strongly so okay. in that indeed you can repeat more or less what i will tell you today and tomorrow uh, so next time uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the framework of uh, functional analysis yeah mm -hmm. okay because i mean you, you presented some um results regarding I, I believe it was the spectrum of a matrix and i, I was uh, i mean the, the question that, that came to my mind was this i mean how, could, could you re redefine Sort of, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, the point is that uh, if you are dealing with networks, so the matrix is really matrix, it's finite, so mm -hmm. you can compute the spectrum under quite easy standard assumption. While mm -hmm. if you have an operator in some uh, functional uh, space, it, it can be hard because you have the, 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 the discrete spectrum, but you also have mm -hmm. the continuous spectrum. And yeah. then you have 
no, no problem, but uh, yeah, you can add more assumption if you want to do exactly what, what I'm doing. For instance, mm -hmm. you, you cannot always diagonalize, uh, you cannot always find a basis that uh, diagonalizes your operator in a functional yeah. space. So yeah. yeah, it can be done, but it's a bit more difficult. Okay, okay. Thank but, you very much. But, yeah, but we can discuss uh, not, the, not, uh, not next time, but uh, next uh, Thursday, because okay. I will speak about this Graphon idea. Or you can already Google Graphon, say G-R-A-P-H-O-N. Mm -hmm. Then you can look at, I don't know, uh, random work on Graphons, uh, Turing pattern on Graphons, uh, diffusion on Graphons, and so on. Okay, all right. Sounds really, really interesting. <laughs> Thank you very, Thank you very yeah. much. Let's wait uh, still uh, some more minutes. Uh, there is uh, Jacqueline, he's here. Uh, Timoteo, she's also co-organizer. She was in, in, a, in a committee last <laughs> lecture. Okay. I had the qualify exam, so ah, okay. sorry for it. I, I hope I can catch up today. Yeah. So, sure. Tim Timoteo, Jacqueline works on your Gothic theory. Oh, okay. consistent with them, yes. hey, you will see some few words about it going theory today also networks but really few ones okay good well it's good because uh, uh, previously i gave a mini course on this uh, about the god theory so maybe the students will do some mm -hmm. connections <laughs> and we see that we have someone from russia piotr as if you can talk uh, yeah, I'm, from, <laughs> I'm from, originally from Poland, but I'm uh, ah, attending, sorry. attending university in, in Ireland. I'm doing ah, a, Ireland. Ah, yes, it's true. So, <laughs> but yeah. it's true. Uh, I love my ignorance between uh, Polish and... Uh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But I was I was also thinking the name was uh, Russian because of uh, I don't know the Russians right uh, writers that is always yeah. A... yeah no is it not Piotr no is it it's written differently Piotr in the Russian yeah it's it's um uh, I think there are two different spellings that I know in Russia uh, one was P Y O T R and another uh, one is P E T R and it's pronounced Piotr uh, uh, I'm not Fairly common okay. name, I think, I suppose. So, okay, so welcome, welcome. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Actually, uh, Glaston is in Poland now, so Brazilian in Poland, uh, Polish. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Glaston. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Suffering, suffering from the cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we have... So, okay, so I think that... Uh, we can start and then people maybe join later and let okay. uh, let start recording okay so uh, i guess you will send us the slides of the last lecture yeah this is the last after, slide at yeah. the, uh, yes so okay so please yeah. timoteo okay so welcome everybody Thank you for attending this second lecture. So I already asked the one question. If you have other question, please do not hesitate to raise them now or while I'm speaking, just raise your hand or open your mic and ask a question. Okay, so it's a lecture, it's not a, a, a talk. Or... Okay, so this is the last, um, the last uh, slide of my, or last time. And so the idea was that I show you the existence of this limit cycle, but I prepare a, a, a slight more simple example to be sure to, to show you what I'm talking. So I also change my, last time I use, uh, say not PowerPoint, so the PowerPoint by Macintosh, and now I use this uh, good notes to see which is the best one for my future lecture on, um, on at distance. Okay, so I decided to, to show you this uh, model which is called Stuart Landau oscillator. It is a, a bit different because it is a complex model. So now Z is a, a complex variable. So he has a real part X and the imaginary Y. And you have also two parameters, A with a real number 
and B is a real, you can think of positive number. And so this uh, uh, oscillator, it actually it describes a complex amplitude, which is Z. And so he has a modulus and a, a, an argument, so an exponential part. And, and the idea is to study this uh, uh, oscillator. Uh, of course, because uh, you can write Z as uh, X plus I, Y, you can uh, use so the real variables and you end up with this uh, uh, real two-dimensional system. So I, I, I think I can do easily, okay, it works. So I, I can do the computation for you, but it's very straightforward. So you have Z dot is equal, so Z A, okay, is right on the same time than me. Oh, sorry, I just uh, forgot to the equation, minus, Z square and Z is equal to X plus I, Y. So if you differentiate uh, uh, the definition, so you have Z dot is equal to X dot plus I, Y dot. And this is equal to so, uh, X, so X plus I, Y, A plus E, I, B minus the modulus of Z is X square plus Y square. And then you, you perform the computation. So you develop uh, the product and you identify left and right members, complex and uh, pure complex and pure real. So you have uh, a X dot is equal to X times A. And then you have I Y times I B. So it is minus Y B. And then you have X times the, the square. So minus X times X square plus Y square. This is the only one. And then you have the complex part. So you have Y dot is equal. Uh, so you have uh, X times IB, so uh, XB. Y times A, so YA. And then you have uh, minus Y, X square plus Y square. So it starts forward just to be a bit uh, warm up. So you have this equation. And now that you have a, a two dimensional real system, but you can recognize that the origin is an equilibrium. Because if you put x zero and y zero, then everything is zero. So you have x dot equal zero, y dot equal zero. And so you want to study the stability about this point. So if you remember what I told you last time, you have to compute the Jacobian matrix, which is the matrix of the derivative of the vector field, say x dot to y dot, with respect to the component x, y. So if you do the, and you should evaluate this on the, equilibrium so on zero and zero so if you do this but the derivative of x dot with respect to x is a and then it is okay let me write it but at the end it will not uh, intervene minus 2x square then you have to uh, so, let me remove this one. so then you have to derivate the, the take the derivative of uh, x dot with respect to y so this is uh, minus minus b minus 2xy. Then you have to take the derivative of uh, y dot with respect to x. So it is b minus 2 times xy. And then the derivative of y dot with respect to y. So this is uh, a minus x square plus y square minus 2y uh, square. And evaluate everything on zero, zero, zero. And so if you evaluate on zero, uh, these terms goes to zero, this one goes to zero, this one goes to zero, this one goes to zero, and also this one and this one. And so at the end, let me, write, let me add in one. So you end up with y is equal to a is the minus is good there. So minus b, b, a. And so you have to compute the uh, again values of this matrix. So you have to compute uh, j minus lambda identity equal to zero. So you have to compute a minus lambda minus b, b, a minus lambda determinant zero, but this is a minus lambda to the square plus b to the square equal to zero, which means a minus lambda to the square is equal to minus b square. So I remember, I, I assume that b is positive. So this means that a minus lambda is equal uh, plus minus i b, uh, that is uh, uh, lambda is equal to a plus minus i b. 
So the eigenvalues of my matrix J are A plus minus AB. And if you remember, the, the origin is stable if uh, uh, the real part of lambda is negative, A is unstable if uh, the real part is positive. And so here you end up with a condition, so the real part is uh, A, this is the real part. So if A is negative, you have uh, stability. If A is positive, then you have uh, instability, okay? The point is that, uh, okay, so the check I did, sorry. So this was it there. So you have you have proved that it's stable or unstable. But the working on the on the real variables is not so easy to understand what happened when you have instability. And uh, but the point is that you have this term there, y square plus x square that looks like a circle of the radius a circle. So you can use this idea and introduce polar coordinates. And this is what is done here. So instead of working in a Cartesian coordinate you use a polar coordinate in the complex plane. So now Z is its modulus, rho of T, times exponential I, 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 I theta of T. And then I will show you that now the equation of motion are really easy, easier at this one. So just let me do the computation again. So uh, you have, oh sorry, you have your equation, Z dot is equal to Z times A plus I minus modulus of Z. Z, and now you are writing Z like rho A E I theta. And then you differentiate Z. This is this gives you rho dot A I theta uh, plus I E I theta theta dot. And then you plug this information inside the equation. So you rho A I theta a plus i b minus and the modulus of z now is just rho square okay so you can observe that you can uh, simplify the exponential of both sides and again you factor terms that are real or pure imaginary so in the real part you have rho dot is equal and so on the right hand side the real part is given by rho times a minus rho square why the imaginary part is given by rho theta dot on the left, while on the right you only have uh, uh, you only have uh, sorry, it's not without i, so you only have b rho. Okay, so this is the system that uh, I show you before. And so uh, the, the first equation uh, has the, for, of sure, for, for sure two solutions rho equal to zero and rho equal to uh, so rho is positive because it's the is the to square root of if a if a is negative you don't have the second solution but B times T. So theta is indeed a, a frequency, is the a angular frequency of the motion. And then you see that the rho is a constant equal to square root of A. And so indeed, so let the check. Sorry, I lose my. Okay, so I, I have to, to write to do by hand. So, so if you look in the, in the plane uh, rho theta, yeah, you have the case a smaller than zero. And so here you, you so let me rewrite again, rho dot is equal rho a minus rho square. And so if you have, if you have this in this case, so the origin is stable, but you observe that a minus rho square is negative. So this quantity is always smaller than rho. So this means that whenever you start in the complex plane, you shrink to the origin. So everything shrinks onto the origin. At the same time, it rotates around by some speed bt. So if A is negative, we are doing spirals. 
towards the origin. So the origin is a stable global uh, attractor. While if A is positive, now you know that you have two solutions, rho equal to zero and rho equal square root of A. And square root of, of A, taking into account that beta is still equal to B times uh, T is a circle. A circle, sorry. And, but you already, you, we also proved that the origin is unstable. So what, what the system does is it spiraling outward the origin reaching the, the, this circle from inside. If you look from outside, if you start with a row larger, so row square larger than A, this quantity is, uh, is negative again. It, it, it remains negative as long as row square is larger than A. So this means that if you start outside the circle, you are still spiraling, but towards the limit cycle. And so we, we prove that we have a limit cycle, which is globally stable, only one moreover. So this is isolated because it's the only one. And so in this case, the system, you pass from a single uh, stable point here to a, an unstable point plus a limit cycle. So if you want, you can, do, you can draw a diagram like this one. If I put now, here, moon parameter A, and here, if you want, rho of the position of the equilibrium. When A is negative, you have a, st a stable point, which is the origin, rho equal to zero. When A is positive, the origin is still there, but it's unstable. So let me draw with a dashed line. And at the same point, you have this uh, square root like solution. So this is the square root of A, but you have to think that indeed there is a, like a, a limit cycle. So it's more or less something like this. So th this means that the solution here, they all converge to the fixed point, while here they converge to this limit cycle. And so we have proved that uh, using this bifurcation, you, you can prove, you can create the limit cycles. Okay, so now I, I would like to, discuss a bit this idea of bifurcation because uh, I think is uh, uh, an idea is very useful also in the following. And so a bifurcation, roughly speaking, is uh, once you, you have a, a dynamical system depending on a parameter, A in our case, then if you move your parameter, at some point you can reach a critical values for which you have a qualitative change in the behavior of the system. So qualitative is not uh, uh, a, a precise definition, but uh, you understand from the, the picture that I show you, qualitative in this case means that you have a single fixed point that bifurcate into a limit cycle plus a, a, again another unstable fixed point. So the shape of the dynamical system or the, port the portrait phase change qualitatively. So this is the idea of uh, uh, bifurcation. So let me show you uh, a few examples of bifurcation that can exist. So I took uh, all the examples from the book by Strogatz that I, I quote the last time. So if you want, I will, I will send you the, the slide at the end. So the simple uh, uh, bifurcation is this saddle node bifurcation. So I, I, I present the result in the case of one dimensional systems, but of course the same results are, are valid more or less in all uh, dimension. And, uh, and uh, I, I also write the simplest system that exhibits this kind of bifurcation. This is called a normal form. So this system here is called normal form. So this means that uh, you can have a much more complicated system, which has this saddle node bifurcation, and then you can change locally variable in such a way the system can be always written in this way. That's what does mean a uh, normal form. So what happens in this saddle node? Well, of course, as the name is say, you have a saddle and a node. So a node is a stable fixed point. A saddle is an unstable fixed point. So this is in my, is in my uh, so this is a node. And it is stable because if you start a bit to the left or a bit to the right to the node, you converge to the node in a one dimension on the line. While this is my saddle, Indeed, once you start close by, you go away in both sides. Okay, but then you move your, it, 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 it,
uh, points can be found, can be determined by putting x dot is equal to zero. That means uh, equal to zero. And because r is negative, you have x equal plus or minus square root of minus r. Okay, so, so these are the two, uh, the two uh, equilibria. But then if r is equal to zero, you, you, you see from the definition that the two, the two roots go coincide to the same point, which is zero. And so here you have an half stable, half unstable node because from the, from the left, you converge to the point and from the right, uh, you go away from the point. So it's a, it's a point which in some sense is, is unstable because you pass through, but it's just for the values of r equal to zero. And once r is larger than zero, then Geometrically, you see that your parabola will never will no longer intersect the uh, x-axis, so you don't have any fixed point. And indeed, you can see that you cannot have this root because r being positive minus r is complex, so you, you don't have the point on, on the real uh, plane. And so you pass from a system where you have two points, stable, one sorry, one stable, one unstable. That once you move the parameter, they collide and then they disappear. So the saddle node is. A, the disappearing of a two equilibria. You have another situation which is called, okay, this is just an example of what is called with a, a more, say, I don't know, fancy name, blue sky bifurcation, because it's as before, but in the opposite direction. And you have two points in this case that appear out of the clear blue sky. So you have your model, which is with R negative. And then once you move up to zero, you have something is happening. And then when R is positive, you have these two points that appear from nowhere. Okay, it's the same as before, just that you did in the opposite direction. You first have two points that disappear, but it's just sometimes you can find this name, blue sky bifurcation. It's just a, a saddle node bifurcation. Okay, then the next one is a, a bifurcation is called transcritic, transcritica, where now the two points, they always exist. So we have again, one stable and one unstable. So again, here we have my stable, which is the origin. And if you start from the positive side, you go to the origin and you start close enough to the negative side, you also go to the origin. And then you have this uh, unstable that uh, I draw in white, a, which is unstable because if you start close by, to the left, you go away, and also to the right, you go away. And so the, the normal form is given now by this equation. And you realize that if you write this as x times r minus uh, x that you have x equal zero which is a root and x equal r which is the second one so you always have two uh, equilibria uh, one is zero and the other is r negative in this case once r is zero the two equilibria do coincide you are in this uh, case over there where again you just pass through the origin and once R is positive, then you also you still have zero as a, a as a, an equilibrium, but now it becomes unstable. While the other equilibrium, which is now x equal to r positive, is stable. So in some sense, you have two equilibria that collide and pass through. This is a bit the idea. You have uh, one equilibrium here yeah, stable. Then if you continue, it, it becomes unstable. While the other one that were unstable. It become unstable. So it's an exchange of stability between two equilibria, but they do exist all the time. So previously you have you have two equilibria and then they disappear. Now you always have two equilibria. They just exchange the stability. The, the, the next one is a bit more interesting because now you increase the number of uh, equilibria. It is called supercritical if you want a, a pitchfork bifurcation. So pitchfork because uh, you remember a fork more or less. So if you think this is a fork. So uh, supercritical because you create two stable new equilibria, these two. You, you will say you can also have the subcritical pitchfork bifurcation where you have uh, uh, two unstable equilibria. Okay, and so this is the, the normal form. Again, if you uh, factorize x, you have r minus x squared. So x equal to zero is always a solution because it's a factor. And then the other solution is x equal plus minus uh, uh, r if r is positive. While if r is negative, you don't have the second solution. So this means that if r is negative, you are here. 
you only have the origin, so x equal to zero, which is stable. You, you can prove again by computing the derivative and showing that is negative. So everything is attracted to this point. But once r is becomes uh, positive, then zero is a tiller solution, but you can prove it now is unstable. And so if you start close to the origin, you will, will go away. And then you have this, this two new solution plus minus the square root of r that you can prove they are stable. Just again, do the derivative and evaluate on plus minus a square root. And then they are stable because they attract what is close by. If you prefer a more geometrical view, if r is negative, this function, which is a, a cubic function, intersect the x-axis only at the origin like this way. So you only have one intersection, of course. While, so if r is zero, you have a tangent in zero. While if r is positive, now the cubic has this uh, shape. So you have three intersections. Then you can prove that one is unstable and two are stable. So now is a, a bifurcation where you have initially one stable point that bifurcate into two unstable two stable and one unstable. So you create something from, from nothing. So as I said, there is the opposite, which is the subcritical. So the important point is not that this is subcritical and this is supercritical because if you want to, the fork goes in this direction or here the fork go in the other direction. So you, you can have a supercritical also if you have another parameters and the fork is like this. This is still a supercritical because supercritical refers to the point that you have, say, more point than before, more equilibrium than before. Okay, so the subcritical is, the, is called subcritical because uh, uh, these points are unstable now. So the idea is really as before. The normal form is very similar, but now you have a sine plus in uh, between r and x square. And so the other root, a, 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 so you have x equal to zero. And the other root is uh, x equal plus minus square root of minus r exists only if r is negative. And in this case, you can prove that if r is negative, then the origin is a stable fixed point. So you are attracted to the origin while these two roots of r so push away from the you can put uh, x equal to zero. so you have this kind of system okay so this is the, the the other pitch for bifurcation so you you can find this too again i i insist that this is a normal form this means that you can have a very different system but once you have a good a set of coordinates, so you have a good change of coordinate, you can only put on, on this form is a supercritical and the other form is subcritical, supercritical, subcritical. So this is really in the neighborhood of, of, the, uh, of the parameter space where you have the bifurcation. Alors, uh, so the, the, the subcritical has this point. So let me go here. So I, I told you that uh, the square root point is unstable but also r, so x equal to zero is unstable if r is positive. So this means that if you take the system, except condition is inside this region, all the condition blow up to infinity. Because if you are there, you are above the or if you go down and so on. So if you use this system, indeed the system is not very interesting because all the solution blow up except the one that are inside. So once you have this kind of subcritical pitch for bifurcation, it's good to ask which is the next leading term. Is it some, of course, should be a power larger than three. So I assume that is x to the five. And so what it matters is the coefficient in front. If it's plus or minus. If it is minus, this means that if you draw now the position of the equilibria, you can find that you have this shape where the initial one is this shape, which is the pitchfork subcritical, which is there. So this part here, but then because of the, of the five uh, power, you have these new two branches. 
Uh, you can prove by just computing the derivative or compute the solution of the uh, fourth order equation, it can be done, that they are stable. So this means now that if you start for R positive, you are pushed away to X equal to zero, but you are catched by this solution here and here. And if you start very say above, you are again attracted toward this solution. So you no longer have this kind of blow up solution. And the same is true if you start with R, which is say uh, small, because now you are attracted to this branch of the stable. What is interesting here is that you can have this kind of uh, hysteresis phenomenon. It is the following. If you, if you start with some parameters, say, I don't know, here. So your system, or oh, yeah, if, so if you start with your R here, and you start your initial condition there, your system converge towards this equilibrium because it's stable. If you slightly move the parameter R, so your system, and you start again close to the previous one, or again here, your system moves close by. So actually you are, you are following this uh, branch, okay? But once you arrive at this uh, RS and you decrease again R, there is no longer this branch stable. And so the, the only existing uh, stable point is the one X equal to zero. So suddenly your equilibria jump from this branch down to the solution. So if you, st you are still decreasing R, you are moving to the left with R equal to zero. But the important point is that if you now instead you increase R from here, you, you will still remain on the X equal to zero. So you don't, you don't jump again to the previous solution. You remain on X equal to zero up to this value, say zero in my case, where the zero solution there is Magnetic where you use a current in a piece of iron, then you have this kind of magnetic field which is created. So, this is the same idea, but the point is that uh, you have your system, you, you continue to change a parameter, your equilibrium continues to change up to some point there, and then you jump to a new value. Okay, but if you go back to your parameter uh, to the value, you will not follow again the same path, but you follow another path. So this is a phenomenon which is quite frequent, it's called so hysteresis. But so it's related to the subcritical pitchfork, but you need this correction term because otherwise everything blew up, okay? Okay, the next one or you already spoke about is the is called op bifurcation. This is the example that I show you in the case of the Stuart Landau example. If you recognize, so here is the case B equal to minus one, this was my B. It, my previous equation was, uh, so I call the rho instead of R, it was A minus, so it was if you want. So this is, the, this is the, the equation that I had before, it's exactly the same. And so here is uh, this kind of a picture where if uh, your parameter, which is called, uh, so in my picture mu, is negative, everything converges to zero, while it's positive, you have this kind of uh, convergence to the limit cycle, spiraling inward and outward. Okay, so the example that I show you to create a limit cycle for the op, uh, sorry, for the Stuart Landau model is a, an op bifurcation. So, is uh, one of the most used bifurcation method to create a limit cycle. Okay, so I will go on on this point. The last point. So, if you remember last time we we started by speaking about uh, so fixed point then we pass to the case of periodic point and now the, the last point that i will just very briefly introduce you is the case of chaotic system so chaotic system or chaotic dynamical system is again a huge uh, research domain so i'll just give you one rough definition there's the following a, a system can be said to be chaotic if it is very sensible to initial condition what does it mean it means that you for some given initial data you, you have your orbit so I say this is this is my orbit, okay? Because I start from this point. Then you slightly change the initial point, so you, you add some small delta if you want, so of delta zero at time zero, and then you look how this new orbit bifurcate with respect to the, the previous one. So this is the, the new orbit, which is just 
I can say x plus delta. Uh, the system is say, chaotic if this distance grow fast in time. A uh, growing fast means growing exponentially. Indeed, if you take the logarithm of the distance between the two orbits, uh, you divide by t. So this is the, the exponent of your potential exponential growth. This means that if you do this, okay, delta grows more or less like exponential lambda t. So this is the maximal Lyapunov exponent. You can prove that it almost uh, everywhere exists with respect to the initial condition. You can prove that indeed there are more than one Lyapunov exponent. So if lambda is positive, you have a chaotic system. If lambda is negative, uh, the system is not chaotic, but you can still have... So if lambda is zero, sorry, the, st the system st can still be chaotic, but you don't have the exponential growth, but you have a power low uh, growth. Okay, but to, to, to be more precise, you need more than this to be caught because of just divergence, you take the solution, you, you take the system x dot is equal to x. Of course, the two nearby solution uh, di di diverges exponentially, but it is not chaotic at all. You can predict the future. So you need indeed that the orbit remains in a bounded domain because if they blow up, it's not interesting at all. So in, in chaoticity means that you have uh, high sensitivity to initial condition, but also uh, orbits to belong to some bounded region that indeed is called chaotic attractor. Okay, and so this opened the way to the uh, measure theory supported by the attractors. So, but I have, I have no time to speak about this point. I just show you two, two pictures that are two main examples of chaotic system that maybe you already see somewhere. So, the Lorentz one is this butterfly effect, you have uh, a, a, an almost linear system, except for this uh, x time y part, so it, so it is non-linear, and then this x times z. And so these two terms are enough to create this strange behavior where you have uh, your point that can do certain number of loop one side of the butterfly, and then suddenly jump to the other side, do another number of jump uh, or turns, jump back and forth. So this is a system that can put uh, in, in, in relation with the shift. Indeed, you can ask, uh, is the system on the right uh, 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 butterfly or on the left? You can show that you can put the, syst the Lorentz system in a bijection with a, a shift left and right, left right so something which is completely chaotic. On the other hand, you have this Rossler system, which is interesting because the, the attractor lives in the space where all the coordinates are positive. So if you're interested in, uh, I don't know, uh, ecology with animals or biology with uh, uh, bacteria or ke chemistry with uh, concentration or stuffs. The, the Russell system is a good toy model because you can prove that you have chaos, but with positive quantities. So X is positive, Y is positive, and Z is positive. So they can really represent uh, the real stuff. Why in the Lorentz system, you pass through negative values. So you cannot use the Lorentz system to study I don't know, ecology, for instance, okay? So this is uh, the part on dynamical systems. And uh, I will now start the second part on network theory. Uh, the last time, uh, except if there are some questions on the dynamical system part. No question? I, I don't see the chat. So Stefanelli, if you see the chat, uh, just- Yes, uh, no, there are no, there are no questions. No, no questions, so, okay, uh, okay, okay, so. Okay, so I, I go on with the, the network part. So I already showed you last time there's two books, the books by Barabashi and the book by say, Newman and Barabashi. Uh, there are many books uh, uh, on complex network. Uh, I, I often use these two in my research or in my lecture. This one by uh, uh, Vega Redondo, uh, which is complex social network. So it means that uh, it's inspired by social networks, but uh, indeed is a complex network book where there are inside epidemics, diffusion networks, and so on. And this is this uh, more recent one, uh, complex networks, uh, which is more um, recent application. There are algorithms. There is also a, a GitHub related to the book where you can download uh, a databases. You can download a, a program in C, uh, I think also in, um, yeah, in C or maybe in R, I don't remember exactly, where there are all the code that are in the book are, are provided. So I think it's a very good book because you also have by side these uh, tools to, to use it. 
okay but again if you google uh, complex system uh, sorry complex networks you find a, a lot of, of books so uh, what is a network so we are speaking about uh, network theory so what is a network so uh, as i told you last time in the introduction a network is just a bunch of nodes say units that are linked together and so you can have uh, some kind of non-physical networks it can be friendship so the nodes are person and uh, the, the the links are friendship relation or you, you can have the www where the nodes are the web pages and the link are the hyperlink so the fact that you click on a page and you go to another page this is not physical there is there is not a wire behind but you you just jump from one hyperlink to the other or you can have email text calls and so on so where you have a person or a robot that sends something which is virtual because it does not really exist except for the electron if you want or you can have the physical networks where you are really a power plant where the nodes are, are the power plant and the links are really the wire so the, the connection are a physical connection that link physically to, to to nodes or the internet where the you have the nodes are the routers and the and the links are the cable the the ethernet cables that link uh, to, to routers or you have the, the transportation like a road train a flight where say in, in the case of road the, the, the link can be uh, cities in the case of train a station in the case of flight are airport and then the, the, the link are uh, road uh, rails and, and the flight the, the, the path of the flight okay so you, you can have on, on very different kind of networks. So I show just uh, this is the flight, the, the worldwide flight uh, map. This is social patterns. There are a network that constructed for children at school. I think it's a school in French where they attach to, to each child a, a RFID tag that allow to, to, to measure how long a child communicates in front of another. And so they reconstruct this kind of network. You have a co social network that we are used to, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. You have a protein network or gene network where the nodes are the protein of the genes. And you have a link if they do interact in some way. Or as I told you, the, 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 the power plant, which where each node is, is a power plant. Then you have wire because you have this line, high, high voltage line, okay? Okay, once you have this uh, uh, stuff, so you, you can understand it's a very uh, broad definition, you, uh, you, you can think so, uh, as I say, that you have these uh, dots that are your basic units, and then you put just the a line, a, a, a link among them. So in the jargon, the, the dots are called nodes, and that pairwise connected among them with a link of an uh, edge. Yeah, you can change a... a you can find that both names is the same. And so, as I told you before, A, B, and C can be humans. And then, if they are friends, you, you draw a line between A and B. And you can also draw a line between A, C. But B and C, they are not friends because you don't have a link among them. And so, because they are friends, they can exchange idea. But for instance, B and C cannot exchange idea directly because you have to pass through A. Uh, the same is true if instead you have taken uh, the www where now you have a and b and c are web pages the page a and b are links so there is a nipper link so a click you can pass from a to b and vice versa you can pass to a to c and vice versa but you cannot pass from b to c you have to pass through a it's so because a and c for instance are linked they share common hyperlinks i told you once you do some web search you can go to a to c or to c to a but not to b just to give an effect. Okay, once you have a, a network, whatever is the kind of network, you can encode it with a, a, a matrix, which is called adjacency matrix, which is a binary matrix. So it's a matrix with zeros and ones that are size n square, where n is the number of nodes. And so you put a, i, j is equal to one, if only if i and j are linked. And then you can compute the degree of the node is the number of neighborhoods. So you just sum A and J over one column, and then you obtain, obtain the number of links that are connected to the node I. Okay, so in my example uh, that I give you before, so assume that the ABC are one, two, three, in, in the index one, two, three, and then you, you see that A is connected to B, so there is a one over there, A is connected to C, so you also have a one over there, 
So B is connected to A, so you also have a one and C to A, but B and C are not connected, so you don't have ones here, but you have zeros. A, if you count, count the degree of A is two, because of two has two friends, so A are two, two friends, while B and C, they have degree one, because they just end, have one friend over in one connection. And so if you sum A, you end up with this, uh, two, one, one, okay? Okay, so this is the simple case of a, a network, but in reality, uh, in several applications, the link are not reciprocal. So this means, so in my example here, I say that A is connected to B, A B is connected to A. So A is a friend of B, A B is a friend of A. Or the web page A has a link pointing toward B and B has a link pointing toward A. But this is not always the case. You can be I, I'm your friend, but you are not my friend. Or I'm a web page pointing to you, but you are not pointing to me. And so in this case, you have directed network. So where you have A, I, J is equal to one, if and only if there is a link from J to I. So pay attention because in some book, they use the opposite uh, assumption. So uh, they define A, I, J equal to one, if there is from I to J. So yeah, just to, to pay attention at the beginning of the book where they, it is the notation, but once you have this, this one or this one, everything is the same, but you have to, to know what you are speaking about at the beginning, okay? So in this case, you have a, a direct network. In my example, so here I have A, which is point to B, A, a point to C, and now I add this link B point to C. So again, if A, I, J is one, if only if J is pointing to I, you, you observe that you only have one ear and ear because you have the A is pointing to B, A to C, and you have a new one here because you have the B is pointing to C. Start forward, I will not insist any longer. The point is that <clears throat> if you have a direct network, now you have two kinds of degrees. You have the number of links incoming and the number of links outgoing. And so you have, in this case, the out degree, which is the sum, so the number of exiting links, so it's the sum on, on the first uh, index, or the number of in degrees, so the number of incoming link, which is the sum on the second uh, index. So this is because I use this convention. So if in your book, they use the opposite, so they use I goes to J means that uh, there is a link, then you have to exchange I and J, so the out degree and the in degree, otherwise you are doing some, some stick somewhere. Okay, so okay, just a more simple example. I compute the number, our degree of A is two because he has two friends. Uh, our degree of B is one because B point to C and C uh, our degree zero because nobody is uh, uh, outgoing from, from C and the in is the same. Okay, okay. Uh, Lastly, uh, 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 okay, in the case of friendship, it's difficult to measure how friend I am with you, but in the case of, uh, of uh, uh, power plant or protein, you can have weight because you can have the voltage passing from uh, for the plant A to the plant B, or in the case of protein, you can have the strength at which the protein A interacts with the protein B. And so in many applications, uh, you can have that the matrix is no longer a binary one, but it's a real matrix. Normally the weights are positive number, but you can also have negative in case. And so you have a weighted matrix. And so you, you say that a i j is equal to s, if only if they have a connection whose weight is s. So here I'm assuming that uh, the, the matrix is uh, non-directed, so it's symmetric. And so this means that also a j i is equal to s, but of course, you could have a case where you have uh, a link point from J, say I to J, with some strength, a, a, a much larger one. So let me go this way. So, so I don't know if you understand, but uh, I would say that uh, uh, J is much more friend to I than I to J. So they are, this is not reciprocate, okay? In this case, uh, you, can, you can show that there is equivalent of degree, which is called strength, which is now the sum, so the same formula, but now it, it takes into account the number of incoming or outgoing links and the strength, the, the weight. And so in this case, uh, you, you see that A, C has a strength two, uh, but also A has a strength one to B, and then now A has a strength three, while 
uh, uh, C as strength two because there is this weight and so on. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is a, another way to encode a, a network which is given by the incidence matrix. Uh, I, I will need in the following, so I will just. Uh, Put the definition right now. So it's again a zero one binary matrix, but now the size is M times N, where M is the number of links, while N is the number of nodes. So the adjacency matrix is a square matrix N times N. The incidence matrix is a, in principle, rectangular matrix of size M times N, where if you want, you have to enumerate the matrix element using as one index, a link, so E, and a second index, a node. So if your link is I, J, then you have the ele element uh, E, I is equal to one. The element E, J is minus one because you are thinking that the link, even if the matrix is not directed, is going in this direction, but it, it doesn't matter really. You can exchange the link and the matrix will not change at the end. or M E K is zero because K is neither I or G. Okay, in the jargon, I is called the tail and J is called the head of, of the link. Okay, and once you have this matrix, okay, oh, okay, let just show you the, in the previous example. Sorry, so this is the example I just showed you at the beginning. You have your initial network. Here is the matrix A that I showed you before. Now I put as the first line the link A B as the second line, the link AC. And so this element is one because the node A is the, the tail of the link AB. This one is minus one because B is the head of the link AB. A similar here, here one, it is minus one. What is interesting with this uh, uh, incidence matrix that if you do the product M transpose times M, you change the sign, you, you, you find a matrix which is N times N. So, is something, and if you look at it, it looks very similar to the adjacency matrix. And it is the adjacency matrix minus a matrix on the, such that on the diagonal, you have minus the degrees, okay? So if you have this incidence matrix, you can reconstruct your adjacency matrix just doing this product, changing one sign if you want, and remove the diagonal, okay? This will be used in the following once we have the dynamics on the, on the network. Okay, so let me now show you some model of, of networks. The first one, in the sense that is the first. Uh, that excuse we me, can yeah? can I just ask a short question? I, I just don't get if yeah, I can course. if I can weight the the edges when it's a direct uh, network. When you have yes, direction. you can also. Yeah, yeah, you can also weight in this case. So uh, here you, you should define, for instance, uh, I E J is equal S if J points toward A. But then you can have, for instance, the I, J, I is equal to mm -hmm. S prime if I points toward J. So yeah, of okay, course okay, you can have you. a non-symmetric non relationship between two, two links. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, I was saying that the, 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 one of the first models is why this one by Erdos and Reni, it is a random network, it's called GNP. So you have N nodes, and you consider all the possible pairs of links. So there are N times N minus one divided by two links. And with a given probability P, you, you draw a link among them. It is a second model, which is called GNM, where M is the number of links. And so the two models are say, statistically equivalent when N is large. So in the second one, you, you have to imagine that you have all the possible networks that test N nodes and M links. If you draw one uh, according to the measure defined on the set, you end up with this kind of, of network. So this is just a definition. So you, you can show easily that the average number of links is given by uh, the binomial N over two times P, because of course uh, you have all the possible couples of links are given by uh, n times n minus one divided by two because I'm considering it is symmetric. And then for each one of those, you, with probability p, you draw or not the link. So this is why the, the 
very large number of links to this number. Here, I, I show you the, the reference. I don't know if you can read it, but this is the, the original paper by Erdo Cerreni where they studied this, uh, this network. So you, if you can see, it's, it's quite old. So network science is, is a recent research topics, but the network, only the graphs, exists since a very long time. The second interesting point, you can ask which is the probability that a randomly chosen node has some degree, for instance, k. And so if you define p of k, this probability, you can show that this is a binomial. A binomial. So you have this, uh, the first factor, then p to the k is indeed the probability that uh, k times you draw uh, the link, so that your node at degree k, because you want to be connected to k other, and one minus p to this n minus one minus k is the negative probability, that the probability that your node is not connected, so one minus p with the remaining nodes. Also, and so in this case, if you take n arbitrarily large, but in such a way that n times p is a constant, then you can show that this number, this probability, convert to the Poisson distribution. So where you have n times p to the k, exponential divided by the k factorial. So in some sense, the erdos reni uh, random network, if uh, uh, the number of nodes is very, very large, is indeed a Poisson distribution. So the probability that a randomly chosen node has degree uh, k is given by this almost Gaussian function. And indeed, this is the plot. If you, if you define the average degree as the sum of pk times k, so the probability of having degree k times this number, so it is, you do this sum, then uh, you end up this function. Uh, it, is, uh, it looks like, really likes to a, a, a Gaussian because this Poisson distribution. Okay, so this means that in an Erdos-Renyi random network, once you fix, fix p and n, Almost all nodes, if you want a large part of node, they have the same degree. They, are, they have the average degree, okay? And so it's like uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the height of the person, they more or less, so they have this distribution. You have very few ones that are very far down or very far up with respect to the average, but the, the bulk, so the large part of, of the network or the nodes are in this part. So they only have almost the same degree. Okay, so the second example is uh, uh, the network is called uh, what Strogatz. Uh, this is again a random network. I show you this, uh, uh, what is the randomness, but with a new property is called random, uh, small world property. So this uh, network has been introduced, I, I thought I put uh, maybe in the next slide, the, the references by Watson Strogatz, but uh, with the inspiration of uh, uh, social network. The, there is this, uh, uh, this phenomenon of small world is, has been uh, shown in, in movies, in, uh, in books, uh, and this is inspired by this idea that uh, if you count uh, uh, in terms of friendship or in terms of uh, having shaken your hands or, or a person that knew, knows other person, uh, you can ask, okay, how far I am from, I don't know, a very known person, say, I don't know. The president of Brazil. Uh, you say, ah, very far because I'm in Europe, I never meet him, he's in Brazil. But indeed, if you if you think a bit, it's not so large because I, I okay, I live in, in, in Belgium, but uh, for sure I shake the hand or I, I met it once the rector of my university, with for sure it he met at least once, or the king of Belgium, or maybe the first minister. Who for sure at some meeting G20 or something, meet Bolsonaro. So this means that with only three steps, I'm linked to Bolsonaro. So it's amazing. But you can do this with almost everything. You can think of uh, uh, friendship. Maybe you should maybe uh, you should think of being linked for a better person. Yeah, OK. <laughs> I, I think you can. Because you are in, yeah, I think in, you can find many other better person to be linked. Yeah, OK. But I, I can just change the last link and say, I don't know, Barack Obama. The, the distance is the same, because my first minister for sure met uh, Barack Obama at some meetings, so okay, it's really the point. It's not the point. So this means that in social networks, despite the very large, the, the size, the huge size of the network, there are shortcuts. So you can go from one node to one another node that you think is very, very far in very few ops. And this can measure by this idea of distance. So the, so the network is not topology. You can, uh, you can embed the network on the real space in the case of, of transportation, and then you can measure links with kilometers and so on. 
but in principle, there is no topology. And so you count the distances with the op, jump, number of leagues. And so you can count the distance between i and j uh, by just counting the number of links. And then you have this average shortest path or geodesical path, which is the average of all the possible distances between two, two, two nodes. Of course, if you have a complete network, so where each one is connected to everyone else, the distance is one. If you have a lattice, so imagine a square lattice where you, you are connected to your north, south, east, and west neighborhood, then you go like uh, one over D, where this dimension of the lattice, so in this case, one square root of N. In the previous case, I didn't show, but in the Erdos Reni, you increase logarithmically with N. So you still have a, a, a larger size, but not so, so large. And so with using this idea, what's the struggle? Oh, okay, I need another stuff, sorry, before. You, you have also introduced the, the idea of cluster coefficient, which is also related to friendship. Uh, normally, if I have two friends, the probability that they two are friends each other is quite high. So this means that if I'm a node and I take two possible nodes connected to me, the probability that they also have a connection among them is large. And this can be measured using this clustering coefficient. So this clustering coefficient is the total possible number of triangles, so person that knows each other, and this is the, the actual number of triangles that exist in my, in my neighborhood, okay? So this is CI measured indeed this point. How many friends of mine are really friends among them, among all the possible friendship that can exist? Uh, so if you take this uh, very simple example, uh, you take, say, node I, he has uh, four friends, so the, the degree is four, but indeed only two of them are friends with each other. So this y is equal to two. And so ci is one third. Indeed, you can, you, can build, you can build also this triangle, but it does not exist. You can build this one, but it does not exist. You can build this one, does not exist, and this one. So among all the possible triangles that exist, you only have two that gives you one third, okay? And then you can average this number on the whole population, on, on the whole network. With these two ideas of length and clustering, uh, uh, what struggles define this uh, network? The idea is the following. You have one parameter, so one knob that you turn from P equal to zero to P equal to one. At the beginning, you have a regular network, so a lattice. You yeah, have an example where, which is a ring, where each node is connected to the first neighborhood, to the second one, and the third one, okay? But then I start with this parameter P to take uh, all the possible link and re rewire. For instance, here, I disconnect these two because of these links now is this one, okay? And so you do this for all the links in some say, uh, I don't know, in some direction, you're turning around and with probability P, you rewire all the links, okay? And if you increase P equal to one, at the end, you have an almost random network because with probability one, you had rewired all the links, okay? At the same time, so here is your parameter that is changing from zero up to one. You compute two stuff. You compute the length, average length, and the clustering. Uh, you normalize with respect to the initial one. So once you have p equal to zero. And you observe that the, the length decreases quite fast. So this is a log-log scale, while the clustering stays constant and then also decreases. And indeed, there is this zone of variable parameters p where you have a large clustering, but a small distance. And so this is the small world. So once you have this kind of network, given n, you have a range of p that depends of n, for which you have this phenomenon of small length or small uh, distances, but I clustering. And so this is the, the, the paper where Watts and Strogatz proposed this is a nature paper in 1898. So it's a quite well cited paper about this small world. Okay. Uh, okay, it's already eight, but we started a bit late, so I, I think I can go on five minutes more. So, okay, but in, in reality, uh, the, the, the first uh, network that I showed, the, uh, um, uh, the Erdos Schleni, is not a real network, in the sense that if you take now a real network, this is a, a network, so here are th three examples. The first one is a collaborator, uh, collaboration among actors, means that you have all the actors of movies, uh, you draw a link between them if they play in the same movie. Or you have uh, the WWW, so 
notes our web pages and there is a link if there is an hyperlink among them and the third one is a power grid so you have power uh, plants that are connected by wire okay uh, so they are real networks they are things that exist in reality uh, if you plot the probability that the node has degree k in, in log log scale you, you, you didn't find this uh, bell shape like in the edge of rain, but you find this kind of uh, decreasing low but observe you are, you are in log log scale so they are exponent they are power low in the sense that the the probability p of k belong it behaves like one over k to some power gamma with gamma are positive okay because i'm in a log log scale so this means that if you think of friendship there are a lot of persons, very few friends. So there are a lot of nodes whose the number K is one, two, three. But there are few nodes, the, the, the apps, as I say, that have very large number of friends. The same is true for the WWW. There are a few pages that are connected to the large number of other pages. I don't know, a very quoted journal, newspaper, or Google site, for instance, and so on. But the, the most part of, of the largest part of all web pages are just connected to one or two others. Or again, the power plant, there are few ones that are very central, and, that, and the, the main, the, the, the most number of them are just connected to the one. So this means that this. Uh, uh, these uh, networks that have been introduced by Barabash and Albert, I will explain in a while as you can build it, are very fragile. Because if you attack the hub, the center hub, so the, the, the actor or the friend, uh, you attack him, you will destroy the network because you remove a node, but a very large number of connections. Why in the Erda uh, case, if you attack the most connected net nodes, because there are many connected nodes, your network will not change too much. Okay, so there is difference between attacking uh, the Barabasi Albert with uh, uh, by by choosing who attack would be attacked and the the Erdos Reni one. Okay, so the idea of this uh, model is again from uh, uh, sociology, if you want. The idea is that. Uh, uh, if you are new in a university or in a town and you want to make some connection, uh, you, you try to connect to people that are most known. And so the idea is that you start with a, a bunch of nodes, say M nodes, that are connected among them. And then each time step you add a new node. So a new person enter in the, in the town or the university. And this person can draw one link to, toward the, the one that already are there. But uh, with whom? But the idea is that uh, this new node will choose the, uh, the node i with the probability is proportional to this degree. So the larger is the degree of i, the more probable is that the new node is connected to him. So this is a feedback loop because uh, if i gets nodes, then k i increases and they will get more and more nodes. Okay. So this is the paper, is a science paper in 99, and where they introduce this model and they study some property. And what is interesting that you can explicitly compute the probability pk in this case, and in the limit of n large, this probability is exactly one over k to the power three. And so this, this power law behavior that I showed before is exactly this one. So this is in the case of n, n arbitrary large. Then I think a few years ago, there has been a quite strong debate on Twitter mainly on the fact that does this kind of network really exist? Because, okay, I show you in the previous slide the power plant, but they, they are truncated at k equal, I don't know, 100, 1000. They do not truncate to infinity. Why? Right? This power law exists for all k's. So, in many applications, indeed, you have a cutoff. You have initially a power law, and then you have a cutoff because the network stops, it's not infinite. And so, people start to understand or think about if this network do exist in reality or not. I think it's, it's not a debate, but the point is that if you if you draw the power law for the erdos Reni network or for this kind of real network, they behave differently. One is like a Gaussian, it is like this uh, power law or, or log log scale linear one. Okay. Okay, you, one can generalize this, this behavior where you, you now put k is just one of k to the gamma. The gamma is a parameter larger than, uh, than, than positive. It is called scale-free. Scale-free because there is no an embedded scale in the network as in the case of the Erdos-Reni where the best scale is the average degree. You can nevertheless 
um, compute the uh, average uh, degree. So it's not difficult because I have not time. So you have just to compute, say, the integral between the minimum degree of your network, say, one or two or three, and the largest degree of your network, I don't know, but it's a very large number, or what of again, k times pk dk. So if now I write this more or less like integral between one and infinity, and instead of pk, I, I, I put one of k to the gamma, this is k times one minus gamma dk. And then according to the value of gamma, so I say gamma is positive, but it's not enough because if gamma is between two and three, then you have the first moment, which is finite, but the second one is infinite. So this means that if you realize this network synthetically with a computer, then they will, they will vary very much because the, the, the variance is, is, is not finite. While if gamma is large enough, then again, the, the, the average degree is finite, but also the uh, variation is finite. So in this case, the, the, the network is more robust. You will obtain always more or less the same network as you change uh, your, your, your replica. Okay, so I think this is the last, uh, two last, so if I can. Uh, this is, so I, I start with the Erdos-Reni, the small world, the, the uh, scale-free, but uh, what if you start with any sequences of degrees? So you choose your sequence and you try to match up these nodes in such a way you obtain a network with this given uh, sequence of degrees. This can be done. It's called configuration method. That is explained in the book that I showed you before this complex network where I, I told you there are also the algorithm available and they show, uh, they provide this algorithm. Here's an example. You, you, you have four nodes, one which is degree three, two degrees two and one degree one. They have to try to connect these nodes respecting the constraint on the degrees and also to have a network again. And so you can have different cases. Here you have uh, some that very simple like this one, but some of it looks like more a, a network. And so if you have a large number of nodes, it's more and more complex. And maybe sometimes you don't have a solution. So this is an heuristic algorithm that uh, provide you the possible network. Lastly, uh, once you have a network that contains a thousand or millions of nodes, you cannot uh, just draw them. You cannot, it's also difficult to, to work on them. So for this reason, people uh, thought of this idea of the TED community. What is a community? Is, is a bunch of nodes that are tightly connected among them. So think of uh, a group of friends. They, that have very few connection with other group of friends. So in a network, you can indeed divide your network into groups that are called communities, uh, such that inside each community, you have a very strong set of connection, like in, in this one, in this one, in this one, but then you have a few connection among them. This is, are called weak links. So uh, links. But they are important because without link without weak links, the network we disaggregate, we disappear because it is split into several pieces. But they are weak. So this means that if you're interested in some process running on the top of this network, if you say speak about some infection, if you start with this node which is infected, with high probability the infection spread among his friends, but with low probability we spread across these links. But once the probability, so once the virus is uh, jumped to this one, then it is spread again to the other. So if you look to the time series, you will see something like the plateaus that are because the virus is, uh, say, discovering new communities in the network. Okay, so this idea of community is very important because in some sense it drives the dynamics on the network. Okay, uh, so there are many, uh, algorithm to, to find the community detection. This is a well-established research domain. Again, we have a huge number of algorithms, some better than others, and some capable to better determine some structure than the others. But okay, if you're interested, we can speak next time or have a look of the book that I, I show you uh, okay, because okay, I have no time to speak about community detection. Okay, so uh, I think if you want, we can stop here because now we will.
start the first part with the dynamics on networks. That so can be maybe done next time. I don't know. Is that to you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, as, as you wish. I had I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about um, COVID and uh, culture. And uh, for example, it, it, the usual dynamics in in the smaller city in Italy. No, I mean not so small, but not so huge. Will be the people meet with the family, and they meet with always the same group of friends weekly. So will be more like this what you were uh, showing, you know, like they have their their community, and then sometimes they meet someone else, but they have more in this classes. But then, for example, this is, uh, it's different from Rio, where uh, people meet a lot of people. They meet uh, 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 a person twice, and then they, <laughs> they, 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 they meet other people. Here, it's less clustered and, and more spread, you know, uh, it's not so clustered. So I don't know. If, this kind of cultural uh, dynamics uh, have been studied with respect to COVID spreading because... Uh, 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 yeah, I, I, it's a good question. I, I, so I, you are anticipating a bit of uh, the next lecture in the sense that uh, uh, understanding how the, the nectar structure influences the dynamics is something that can be done. So for sure, uh, there the should be models, uh, uh, so, say, synthetic model, I mean, uh, toy models where people put an epidemic process on top of network, then change the topology, and they observe something different. This is for sure exists. I don't know if people did this kind of result using real data. So they use a real data of friendship and they measure uh, how virus, uh, COVID or other, spread in, in this kind of uh, structured network. So I, I don't know, because in this case, you, you really need data where you know who is fr friends with whom. But the idea of the uh, tracking, tracing, and so on is this, that once you find someone which is positive, you have, you have to track and to trace all the friends in some sense, or the person that he, he met before, a, a, a test them before, just the test person at random. But this is uh, the idea. So saying that the, vir the virus is spread more easily among the group uh, or your friends in some sense or, or, or the, the person that you you meet more often then uh, it's best to check them before but if you say that in Rio the dynamics is completely different this uh, testing and tracing is not very effective because then it's better to pick it at random yes I say it's more it's more random yeah because in fact this was the pro the uh, when they do they did the lockdown you know people lock down with their family this is the initial you observe that initially when you do the lockdown you have an increase of infection because yeah, of course. if in a family uh, people i don't know the parents and the children they will not overlap so much as as in lockdown if there is one fact of course in fact all all the family so in the short uh, in the short uh, so this is when you have a very clusterized uh, uh, it's more of uh, you have a, a closer, um, how to say, if, uh, a faster spreading in the small term within the class. But of course, then if you cut the link to the other class, mm -hmm. then you, you, you might isolate the, the few classes with the problem. No? It's so, so yeah, it's an interesting point is also, for instance, you think of, of children in school, but the class is a, a very connected group of uh, the person and then the spreading can be very high. So fortunately, young person do not spread so much. But anyway, if if they go at home, at school, home and school, they are the, the vehicle for, for the virus or at the university or the I, I schools also. Yeah, yeah, it's true that this kind of uh, very tight structure can increase the spread of, of the virus over can be a fashion, can be photos, can be uh, whatever you want, but yes. Yeah, but also on the other hand, the other stream, the random spreader. <laughs> we, we also can have someone that travels so much or moves so much and it is in fact- uh, Yeah, so this is another point. This is the point of the super <laughs> spreaders where, uh, which is a, an hub in, in, my, in, my, in the case that I showed you before. is a guy which, because he, he met a very large number of person, he has a very high probability to uh, 
pass the infection. Yeah. So the, the infection is two times, is the number of person you meet and the time you spend with them. Yeah. So if you meet exactly. only one person, but you spend all the day, the probability is high. But if you, yeah. you spend a few hours, but you meet 100 person, the probability at the end, someone among them got the virus is again high. Mm -hmm. So it's just, a, it's two scales, but they're related in some sense. Yeah, yeah, I think that real dynamics is closer to one stream and Italian dynamics is closer to the other. <laughs> they, they, they are, they kind of, I don't know, it would be interesting to, to perceive, instead of monitor the people, to perceive the signature from the data. You see, like, uh, um, I don't know, some, if, I don't know if it, maybe it's comparing two towns of the same size and see, I don't know how this can be done, but it would be interesting. To... Uh, uh, there are data from Google, but also Apple, uh, how people change their behavior, social behavior during the pandemic, the lockdown. Uh, so you can check that they went less often to the school, of course, to the workplaces. To the shops and so this can be used in some sense to to do this data but there are also data that are taken from mobile phone where oh. they have okay of course mobile you are not for sure uh, close because you can phone to someone which is uh, oh. well, or not or not because actually uh, i've noticed that during the, the some restriction here people go more often to the supermarket because supermarket became the happening place where people could ah, meet okay. so, <laughs> so you close some path but you create some new path okay. where actually uh, you know so yeah so it's, it's interesting but you're right you know uh, you create a new new network and uh, new nodes new nodes so the supermarket became a node because uh, people could is the only place uh, where now people meet you know and they don't go to cinema they don't go yeah. to <laughs> and in fact in fact actually once one time i i noticed i was looking at the detailed data from one one neighborhood i will not mention because people would get scared <laughs> yeah and i've noticed in one street i've noticed that some cases a lot of cases uh, they were living nearby and so i start looking and say how can people are like they're not in some building but you know three five minutes from each other so i look at the map and I noticed that there was a, 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 a supermarket. <laughs> so, so yes, yeah, so, so it's 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 a it's a new place. But anyway, okay. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, it will be good if we uh, we have the slides. So actually, even yeah, okay. For, I can uh, send you the first part of the slide up to this one. Uh, yes. Okay. So people can can review and actually yeah, of course. Uh, to see the, the books um, that you mentioned before yeah. the next lecture, that would be great. Thank you. So I, okay. I, I'm sorry I, I took all the questions. People want to ask questions. Let, let's thank uh, uh, Timoteo for this lecture before I forget. Yeah, so I was going to say that we did not, <laughs> did not thank you. So someone someone has question question no. Yeah, I, I have a very silly question. Um, it is that you don't have any example that it is worth to think of an infinite network because I, I, when you think about these examples, the, well, I actually want to go think about another thing that not COVID. We just think about this. Yeah. But this is it's really nice to, to, to model COVID. But uh, uh, is it possible to think about something that we want to, to study that could give an uh, infinite uh, graph? I cannot... Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so let me just uh, draw one picture to explain you. As again, this is uh, something that I would like to present uh, in the last uh, lecture. So uh, I told you about these adjacency metrics. Uh, so if you take uh, a, a network where each node is connected, I'm oh, sorry, each node is connected to its neighborhood, say, they start some distance k, okay? So this means that two nodes are connected among them if they are k friends apart. So if you do the, the matrix, if you, if, you, if you compute the matrix, the matrix is something like this. You have a band of ones, so they are all ones, and all zeros. So this is n times n. 
Now you can think, okay, let me go n to infinity. What up? Okay, you, do, you, don't, you don't have any longer a matrix because n goes to infinity, but you can define a function wxy, which is a Wall's graph, if you want in zero one, is something like this. So one and zero. And so now this function is the probability that, so W is the probability that node X and node Y are connected. But now nodes is a continuous, so it does not exist really a node. Okay, so using this uh, W, you, you can use what I told you at the beginning, this graph phone idea. So where you have an infinite number of nodes, there are so many nodes that you can compute them as if it was a continuous of nodes. Uh, so what is important? The point is that, uh, uh, so yeah, I put a very simple example, but this can be done in more complex one. The point is that, first of all, if you have a function, you can work in functional spaces. So yeah, all the branch of functional analysis is very good. Second point is that, okay, uh, even if I have this kind of function, if now I, I, I draw or I select n equal to 1 million, I have a network, this one, which in some sense can behave similar to the limit. And so if you can prove a result in, that say that if n is large enough, my finite cell system behaves close enough to the limit, then you have a result going from infinite dimension to finite mm -hmm. dimension. And the, the last point is the result uh, very recent that uh, once you have a network of friendship and so on, there's a problem of privacy because if I know all the friends, so if, if you think of a, a mobile phone, if you know all the friends that I have, it's quite easy to know also friends of friends because of this idea mm -hmm. that they call each other. So once you have a network, you lose this privacy. But if you have a matrix where the number of nodes is infinity, in some sense, you can, I don't know, embed this privacy into the continuous in such a way. So I give you the matrix. You don't know exactly who are the nodes, but then you can sample one possible network from this matrix, from this function, if you want. And then you lose completely the identity of the nodes. So if you want, this W is a way to pass information about social network without uh, going against the privacy. Mm. But this okay. is a recent result where people are using this idea to, to really overcome this problem. Very nice, very nice, thank you. Okay, so other question? Oh, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I always forgot the recording. So, uh, question, more question? Okay, now that you stop the recording, I can tell you that most of the people are available in PDF. Oh, the books are available in PDF. So if you want, <laughs> I can send you the book in PDF. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Yes. <laughs> but let's forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe okay. I, can, I can create a Dropbox where I put uh, some stuff because uh, maybe a, a huge PDF I cannot send by email. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Okay, great. So let's thank Timoteo, and uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, we are waiting for your uh, for your notes for this yeah, slide. Yeah, I, I will send you. So now I think it's time to have a dinner for me. So yes, uh, I will send yes. you say, tomorrow morning. Yes, yes, of course. And uh, and the students, if you have question at the beginning of the next lecture, you yeah, can ask. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, on Tuesday. Okay. Two o'clock. Thank you very bye. much. Uh, thank you to you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.